Welcome to our six-part series on best practices for data warehousing. In today's session, we're going to focus on star schemas and what are the best practices in order to implement a star schema in an Oracle data warehouse environment. So what is the star schema model? The star schema model is typically called that because the diagram of a star schema looks just like a star with a fact table at the center and the dimension tables as the points on the star. So it is much more of a dimensional approach and it's a much more simplified data model than their normal form. With the star schema, you find that the drill paths and hierarchies are actually embedded into the data model, making it much easier for a novice or inexperienced user to navigate that model and get the data they want out of that environment. So the star schema is typically what we call a selfish model because you see just one view of the data. So the, the data has already been aggregated, perhaps summarized to see departmentalized or single view of the data. So as you can see in the diagram, you really do get the impression that a star schema is a star. At the center of our example here, you see the sales table as the center of the star. And then at each of the points are the dimension tables that contain the more detailed information about each of the aspects of the model. It's far easier for an end user to understand this model because the majority of the information they want to know is already contained in the fact table. They just join out to the dimension tables to pick up additional attribute information from them. But the key information that they need is in that single table, making it far easier for them to be able to drive this data model if they have less knowledge of the data. In Oracle's typical data warehouse reference architecture, we see three layers. The staging layer, which is where we see the data enter and be staged before it gets transformed into the foundation layer, which is typically third normal form. And then finally, the access or performance layer. It's in this access and performance layer that we see the star schemas typically. We see them there where they are summarizing the information and the data for a particular view. Perhaps it's for a department or a particular project that you're getting just one look at the data in the star schema and making it much easier for the end user to navigate in that environment and get the information out that they need in a timely manner. So how do you implement a star schema in an Oracle data warehouse? Typically, you need to do two key activities in order to get star transformation, which is our goal. And that star transformation I'll explain in just a moment. But the two activities you need to do are to create a bitmap index on each of the foreign key columns in the fact table and to set an init.or parameter star transformation enabled to true. Both of these together are going to allow us to do star transformation. So what is star transformation? It's actually a powerful optimization technique where the optimizer is going to rewrite the queries that come in in a star schema to allow it to be done in a two-phase approach. So the query will be rewritten to allow the first phase, which will retrieve all the necessary rows from the fact table using those bitmap indexes that we created on the foreign key columns. Once we have all the necessary rows from that fact table, we'll enter phase two of the query execution, which will join out to all of the dimension tables. And that's typically done using hash joins. So let's take a look at an example. In this example, we're doing a join between our sales table, which is the fact table, customer, products, and time. You'll notice that in a typical star query, there are no predicates or filters on the sales table or the fact table. All of the filters or predicates come on those dimension tables. You'll see that customer city needs to be Boston, the products is umbrella, and the month and year are May 2008. All we see is that the sales table is joined to all of the dimension tables, and then the filters are on those dimension tables. So that's the query that comes in. But with star transformation, Oracle's going to rewrite that query. The first step in the rewrite is to create a query that just goes against the sales table. You'll see there in the from clause, the only table listed is the sales table. But in each of the where clauses, we have a subquery that touches the dimension table with the predicate. So you'll see in the first one there, it's where the customer ID is in. Select customer ID from customer where the customer city equals Boston. By rewriting the query in this manner, we're able to use the bitmap index we have on customer ID on the sales table. Remember, we created a bitmap index on each of the foreign key columns on the sales table. 
So by finding the rows with the customer IDs from the customer table where the city is equal to Boston, we're able to use a lookup on that bitmap index to get the rows that have the matching or corresponding value of city equals Boston. We do the same with products where the product equals umbrella. And we do the same with time where we have month of May and year 2008. By being able to use bitmap index lookups, we're able to retrieve a bitmap for each of the set of rows that matches each of those filters. We then do a bitmap merge operation that ands those bitmaps together. Remember, a bitmap is a series of ones and zeros that can be easily added together using very little CPU and memory resources. Once we have that combined bitmap, we're able to do a row ID lookup on the sales table and would extract the corresponding or matching rows. Once we have the results set from the sales table, we enter phase two of the query transformation. In phase two, Oracle is going to join that result set from the fact table out to the dimension tables and pick up any other additional information that may be necessary for the query. It's often easier to understand the star transformation when you look at an execution plan. In the execution plan you see before you, we're actually going to show the two phases to give it an easier way to understand how the transformation works. Phase one, we are going to rewrite the query to make it just be against the sales table, but having subqueries in the where clause predicates that go against the dimension tables. And you see that here. You get a full table access of each of the dimension tables, time, customer, and product, but you also see that there's a bitmap index range scan done on the bitmap indexes on the foreign key columns of that fact table. Once we have that resulting set, you see there on line 10, we do that bitmap merge operation that I spoke about, where we merge the results of all of those lookups. And once we have that, you see on row 8, we do a bitmap conversion to row ID, and then we use those row IDs to extract the full set of rows that are necessary to match the query from the sales table. Once we have that result set, it's time for phase two. In phase two, we're gonna join back to the dimension tables using that result set we got from the fact table. Now you may be noticing that there are only two dimension tables listed in the phase two and not three. The customer table is not listed in our phase two or in our join back scenario. You might be wondering why. The customer table is not listed in this particular execution plan because we did not select anything from the customer table in the select list of the query. So there was no need to join back to the customer table to retrieve additional information up to answer the query. So Oracle is smart enough to eliminate that join because it's not necessary and we're only going to join back in this case to time and to products. So in summary, when you're optimizing star schema in an Oracle data warehouse, you want to create a bitmap index on each of the foreign key columns in the fact table. You want to set star transformation enabled to true in your init.or environment. And then you want to ensure that the execution plan shows that star transformation just like we saw it on the previous slide. For more information, you should go to search.oracle.com and put in the keywords data warehousing or Go to the white paper that accompanies this six-part series and find more information on implementing star schemas there. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to an Oracle Screencast. 